Kerbal Space Program 2 is a handful of hidden secrets, and one of these I'm told is inside of Jewel's thick clouds. Now in the original game, if you tried to descend too far into Jewel, eventually your craft would die to the bottomless abyss. In this game, however, watch what happens when I teleport a pod over there with a Kerbal and drop it in the atmosphere. Now I am using a mod to teleport me here, so the camera's acting a little weird at the moment, but you can see here I let go of the pod and I teleported myself around Jewel. This let me fall in a lot further. Further, and once I had reached 200 kilometers, I started to fall in. Now you'll notice here, pretty quickly the atmosphere becomes very overwhelming and I start to slow down dramatically. Now of course, I sped this up a lot for you guys, because it took me quite a while, even on 4 times speed, to fall all the way in here, but once I got through the main cloud layer, you can see what I'm talking about here. For whatever reason in this game, they decided to add actual terrain on Jewel, and it's not just totally flat. This is fairly interesting, and while I was falling relatively fast here, fortunately Kerbals are still pretty much indestructible and I was able to fall down and start walking around. Now this was great, but what I really wanted to try doing here was landing a rover on the surface and as you'll see, this is definitely anything but a trivial task. Now of course, the easiest thing you would think to do is just to add a bunch of parachutes since the atmosphere is so thick anyway, it should be able to bring me down slowly. Now this was my first idea here and you can see I put down a very large hydrogen tank and on that, I started stacking a ton of parachutes. Now, just to try this out, I used the mod again to teleport myself to 100,000 meters, and you can see me slowing down quite dramatically. But you can see, once I got below about 1,500 meters per second, I pulled off the chutes, and the game didn't really seem to like that at first, but it calmed down a little bit more, and I could see here my speed was falling dramatically. Now, it also seemed to be stabilizing me a lot, and overall, this was looking good at first. Of course, though, there is going to be a a big problem here, and you can see that happen once I fall down a little bit further. Eventually, my parachutes just ended up completely going away, and it seemed like the thickness of the atmosphere was making it impossible for them to fully deploy, and therefore they just got ripped off. Now, the tank was still getting slowed down a lot by the atmosphere, but it wasn't enough here, and I managed to still slam into the surface and completely break it. Now, with parachutes out of the question, I still needed to slow down, and the next thing I was thinking was using the dart engine. This engine is still very efficient in atmospheres, and I was hoping I was going to be able to burn, even if it was going to be pretty inefficient in the thick part of the atmosphere. At around 14,000 meters, though, I ran into a massive problem, so you can see my specific impulse is zero seconds. All that means is I'm generating literally no thrust at all, which is very bad. The only way I'm slowing down now is just going through the thick part of the atmosphere, and of course, at 200-something meters per second, I still just slammed into the surface, and instantly broke apart. So I decided to clear off the rocket that I had, and you can see next what I'm putting down is some reaction wheels. Now I had a weird idea here, but I was thinking that if I added these on alongside some extra fins, I should be able to use these as a helicopter to spin myself up and actually slow down a lot. I could see going through the atmosphere here, it was automatically spinning me up, and at least with that working, all I was going to need to do is the exact opposite to slow myself down. So of course, in the air now, I teleported myself myself back over to Jewel, and you can see me falling back into the atmosphere. Once I fell down to around 50,000 meters, I wanted to give this a shot. Now you can see here, I'm going about 40 meters per second before I start spinning, and once I do, I somehow manage to go even faster. I've noticed this effect before in this game, and it seems like helicopter-esque mechanics just aren't quite there yet, and I was gonna need something else. Now there's one other source of thrust in this game that's a little bit different than everything else. Here you can see I'm putting down a command seat on 2D couplers. Launching this off here, I get a pretty good amount of speed, and this was pretty much my plan to slow down at the last second. Now, seeing that success, I just started adding on more decouplers here, and I wanted to see how much speed I could gain. So now in the launch pad with my comically large stack, I just started decoupling these, and while at first I wasn't getting a ton of speed, at the very end here you can see just how fast I got launched away, and for a second there, I barely hit 700 meters per second. Now, Jewel's atmosphere is going to be very thick, and its gravity is a lot higher, but I wanted to give this a test run because I really thought it might actually have a chance of slowing me down. Now, of course, at first tier, things can never quite go right, and I was managing to fall exactly upside down, but I figured it should be good enough anyway to just try launching these off in the atmosphere and seeing if I was going to gain speed. Now, judging off my speedometer, it actually did seem to be working here, and I was gaining a lot of speed into the surface. All I need 
need to do next was figure out a way to maybe slow myself down a bit more and also stay the right way around. Now, I thought about using parachutes here since they actually were doing a pretty good job for a while of keeping myself going straight and giving them a shot here. Now, this actually did seem to work at first here and I could see it was falling directly up and down and this was looking great. Eventually though, these still ended up ripping off here which wasn't really what I was looking for and I was worried about stability for the last 10,000 meters of my fall. Now, next up, I was thinking about using these surface panels. These aren't perfect, but I figured they should sort of work like stabilizer fins to keep me the right way around while also providing a lot of air resistance to slow me as much as possible. This seemed like a really good idea since the gravity is so strong, I was very worried I wasn't going to be able to slow down even with all these decouplers. Now, falling into the thick part of the atmosphere, I put them the wrong way around, but they did actually seem to be doing a pretty good job of slowing me down here, so I flipped them to the other side of the decoupler stack, and I also added on more panels for even more of a slowdown effect. I was also curious at the time how fast these legs could end up taking an impact, so I added a bunch of them on here, and I wanted to give this another test. This rocket proved to be very unwieldy though, and eventually this just ended up completely ripping apart. Now at this point, I was just trying a whole bunch of different things to slow me down, and I really never quite settled on anything I liked. After quite a while, finally I decided to go for this dart design, and you can see here I'm putting wings facing in the correct direction. Now alongside these, I also wanted to add on some more fins to the edges facing horizontally. This should both guide me down and slow me down a lot. Now teleporting myself over the jewel here, you can see it wasn't really all that stable, so I decided to get rid of these side wings and Finally here, I had something that was keeping me straight. Now, I still was pretty worried I wasn't going to slow down enough, but honestly, even just these vertical wings seem to be doing a pretty good job of slowing me down, and I was really hoping the decouplers are going to make it all the way there once I had the weight of the rover on it. Now, speaking of which, that's actually what I want to make next here, and you can see to do that, I had it on the structural panel, I put down a couple wheels in the front, and I also put the same wheels in the back. Now, these should automatically have the right steering settings on them, so all I have left to do now now is add on some solar panels to charge this up, add on a seat to the front, and also a battery to power it once I'm on the surface. Now with that all made, you can see here I'm putting it at the top of the decoupler stack, and with that, I wanted to try giving this a test on the runway. Now fortunately here, I seem to be able to accelerate up the wheels, and you can see I can steer them left and right. This was pretty much all it needed to do, so at this point, I added on another decoupler, and on that, I added on a hydrogen tank. Now I wanted to go for this larger one instead here, and you can see I'm putting out the large largest hydrogen engine that there is. Now this all of course is to get me all the way to Jewel, but to get off the ground I was going to need a bit more of a boost, and for that I tried using these solid rocket fuel boosters. These are pretty much my go-to since they're so easy to use, but pretty randomly it ended up just failing on me. Now I tried this again to see if something was weird here, and looking a bit closer I could see all these tanks were vibrating. Now to solve that I wanted to add a bunch of these struts here, and you can see after adding a a few of these on the top here, I started to fly up into the air. This was going well, but I had very little control. As soon as it started to tilt to one side, the entire rocket ended up tumbling. Now to hopefully solve that problem, I took apart some of these decouplers, and you can see here I added in a fairing. Now this lets you cover things, and after shrinking down some of these wings here to make it fit a bit better, I managed to somewhat get it all covered up. For whatever reason, I was having a lot of trouble finishing this off, and it really didn't want to come down to a nice point, so instead you can see there's this little gap at the top. Now I was hoping this wasn't going to be a super big deal, and you can see now I'm launching off the runway once again. Unfortunately though, it still ended up going side to side, and I was losing a ton of wings, and I realized this still just wasn't going to work. Now I finally decided here to shrink down the wings as much as I could, and you can see I also deleted off the fairing. Now with this, I was hoping that I was minimizing my wing area on top, and I'd be able to get all the way to Jewel without tumbling over. Now at around 7,000 meters, I started to do a gravity turn here, which didn't really go very well, so my new strategy was to not try to tilt at all. This is going to lose me a little bit of energy getting to Jewel, since I'm not going to be able to use the rotation of Kerbin as an extra boost to get there, but at the very least, things seem to be going well, and you can see here at 26,000 meters, I deployed off my first stage. At this point in the atmosphere too, I was able to tilt a lot 
but Moritz out completely tumbling over, and things were looking pretty good. And I also just kept extending out my orbit more and more, and you can see here, once I got about halfway over to Jewel, I ran out of fuel in my solid rocket fuel boosters, and I switched over to hydrogen. Now, trying this out here, it gave me a pretty good amount of thrust, and I definitely had enough fuel to make it all the way over there. But with just a little bit more burning here, you can see I managed to escape Kerbin, and now I'm on a trajectory somewhere near Jewel. Now, I wanted to refine this a little bit more, and you can see here, I'm just trying to get in on a nice scrape by Jewel. My plan for this burn was just to get myself a lot closer in, and I figured I'd do the fine tuning once it got even closer. Now, to make this burn happen, though, I did need to point specifically at the maneuver node, and I kind of forgot to add on a reaction wheel, so I had to spend an insanely long amount of time turning this thing around. Eventually, though, I did get it somewhere where I needed it, and you can see now, I kept refining this and getting a nice scrape by Tylo. Now, getting this encounter at the moon is gonna allow me to get captured within Jewel System using the least amount of energy possible, and after a lot more waiting here to turn myself in the right direction, I did manage to pull off that burn here, and you can see now me getting into Jewel's sphere of influence. Now, I pulled down my periapsis a lot more here, and decided to settle in around 150,000 meters. This I was hoping was gonna slow me down a lot without just ripping off parts constantly. And after a little bit of waiting here, I managed to teleport right into the atmosphere, and you can see now I'm starting my fall. Now, one of the first things I did was dropped off this hydrogen tank since I really didn't need it anyway, and it was a lot of extra weight. Now, here, I continued to fall down at four times speed until I touched the atmosphere, and this caused me to explode. With just a quick reload here, I was able to hit it at one times speed, and this seemed to keep it all together. Now, I was spinning quite a bit, but I did manage to slow down as much as I needed here, and you can see me slowly start to fall down into the clouds. Now, at around 800 meters or so here, I was starting to think about slowing down a bit and launching off some decouplers. And I started doing that here with the bottom sets, and I was only slowing down a little bit each time, but with the more I deployed, the slower and slower I was going, until eventually, every time I deployed one off, I ended up reversing speed and bouncing up a little bit. Launching these off also generated quite a bit of lag here, and I was trying to make them all hit into each other, so I didn't have to deal with any problems. This, though, seemed to work pretty fabulously, and you can see here my gentle landing on the surface. Now, I dropped a quick save, and after that, I finally decoupled off the rover, which went a little higher than I was hoping, but it did mostly land on the surface. Now, this almost worked out, but it did end up falling over here, so with just one more drop onto the surface, I gave this another try. With another attempt here, though, I was able to land in much the same way as before, and you can see now I tried much more carefully launching off the rover. This time, I got a lot more lucky here, and you can see it landed on the wheels. With this thing finally down, though, that's a full mission completion. But guys, if you have any more ideas for weird missions that could try out, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Of course, also make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, until next time.